Hey everybody, Chris here with Clean Spores Woodworking Shop. Today, we're going to be showing all about this three horsepower water-cooled spindle from Next Wave. This is the new one. This is the upgrade from the two horsepower. Still runs on 110, gives you all the benefits of the, the uh, half inch and quarter inch collet, but you also get the fact that you can run this thing on the machine, no more buckets, no more hoses running off to the side. So let's get started. We'll start with sort of how we've got everything laid out. I've already unboxed it. And you can see the parts and stuff on the table here. Obviously, it starts here with the e-cool system from them. This will get mounted on the back side of the, the gantry. We've got the VFD um, system here. That'll get mounted down somewhere in the, close to the control box. And in some of the other parts and pieces that are included are the, uh, the mounts that go, go on the machine. So we'll replace this old one. you got your quarter and a half inch collet. you got a set of wrenches. And, of course, the bolts to be able to mount that to the machine. And none of this would work without the spindle. So, of course, we've got this, this three-horsepower spindle sitting here on the table ready to go. A lot of cables and parts. Of course, can't forget the owner's manual. That's a crucial part of the equation. And there are some tools you're going to need. You will need a Phillips, a flathead, and a number five or five-millimeter Allen wrench. And something you'll have to probably go out and purchase is the propylene glycol. You will need to pick this up. This can be found at most of your auto parts stores without any problems. Uh, but you will need the propylene glycol. Don't use regular radiator fluid or a coolant that would go in your car. This is a marine uh, grade product. Uh, make sure that it is the propylene glycol. You can also use distilled water, uh, but this is better, especially in cases where you know you're gonna run into cold temperatures in the wintertime. Uh, nice hot pink color. So should be very visible once we start getting this rolling through. So let's get started with the assembly. I'm gonna stick that down below the table, get this box out of the way, and let's kind of see what we've got. First things first, um, what they recommend in the manual is to mount the e-cool, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way so it's completely off the table and not in, not in the way of what I'm trying to do. Pretty excited about this. I've been waiting to see this three horsepower spindle for quite some time. This is gonna be a nice add on to this machine. Uh, and if you're curious why it's important to do the upgrade for a spindle, well, if you've ever ran a router, they're in godly loud. And they're loud enough when they're down on a workbench. It's even worse when they're up high like this and right in your face. So the benefit of uh, completely getting rid of that loud router is gonna be nice. The spindles run so smooth and so quiet and they can run for prolonged periods of time with minimal issues. One, because this is water-cooled, and two, that's what spindles are designed for. The nice thing about this is this comes with an actual uh, spindle, CNC spindle collet uh, system. So it's a snap system instead of using a traditional collet like what's on a router. So get this completely out of the way. Now I'm free to do a little bit of work. So unlike most men, I do read the owner's manual. One, because you may miss something if you just start throwing stuff on there, and I hate doing things twice. So I like to at least browse through there, especially with something like this, where there's gonna be electronics and, and cables and wires uh, ran. So it is important to at least understand and read through this a little bit, sort of like wearing safety stuff in your shop. <clears throat> so as I look through this, they do say the first thing they wanna do is mount this e-cool on the back side of the gantry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this around And I'm going to bring this e-cool system around to the back side. There are four screws that hold this housing on. So you're going to want to take your, your uh, Phillips screwdriver, and you don't want to take them out, but you do want to loosen them just a little bit. So I'm going to loosen these four screws. And you want to be careful pulling this lid off because it is connected inside here with this cable. Now, you can disconnect this cable if you need to, and I think for this purpose, I'm gonna do so, just so I don't have this in the way and risk doing some damage to the wiring. There are two T-track nuts, T-nuts on the back side of this. This is gonna get mounted up here, so this is what we wanna do first. So we're gonna take this and slide this assembly right into this T-slot, and it might require me to take this Phillips and loosen this a little bit. All right, so let me, I think I see what my problem is. There we go. Loosen this one. I 
want to make sure these aren't engaging. So I'm going to go ahead and close these track clamps down because I don't want them in the way. And this needs to mount somewhere on this far right side. What works best is there. there's two screws holding the gantry onto the back of the gantry support. So I'm going to slide this right up next to that and give myself just a little clearance. Then I'm going to come in here and tighten these up. Now, on the back, you've got this cable track that's running the length of your machine. Um, these hoses need to be able to mount in this track and run up and across to this back side of this. Well, obviously, you don't want to start these hoses far back because it creates a pinch point. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've popped these open so it makes it easier for me to track them. And I'm going to run these hoses right in this track with the existing hose. I want to make sure there's plenty of room here and not going to create any problems. And I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to lock that in place. So one of those is at least down. And you can hear the snap. So now those are kind of locked in place. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of slack so I know I'm good to go. Feed these straight across, trying to be neat with the wiring and the cables. I'm going to go ahead and find another one here that I can lock down. And at this point, it's probably safe to close those, but I'm going to leave them open because I have a feeling I may need them later. So let's go ahead and get these ran all the way up to the back side of this motor, and I'm just going to let them hang over there for just a moment. Now, with that being done, we could do a number of things. We'll see what the manual suggests we do from here. All right, we've got that mounted. That's ran. Uh, we've got the track cable. We've got the hoses ran. Uh, now it's talking about removing the uh, router mount, which we've already done, uh, and installing the spindle mount. So we're going to leave this set on the back side of the machine. We're going to spin this around and start working on the spindle mount now. Make sure everything's still going to be lined up. Looks good. Yep. All right, so grab this. And this does include four new bolts for that spindle mount because this is a different, it's a different size than what came on it. And I'll show you the two just so you can see. So you can see these two are, are clearly a little bit deeper. Uh, the nice thing about this is they give you everything you need. So you've got all your hardware ready to go. Now one side of this is solid. The other side is loose. What I mean by that is this piece is all one solid piece and there's a gap right here that allows you to tension that up. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to get two of these kind of started and I'm going to try to fully tension or mostly tension this left side. Now this would be a good time uh, if this would be your machine to get a tramming jig and make sure that this is trammed properly um, before you fully install it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to come back later and do that, and maybe we'll showcase how to go about tramming a, a spindle or tramming a CNC. But for now, uh, we just want to get this installed. And that's close enough for now. I don't want these tight because I want to be able to get that spindle in there. But I do want them snug. Now, you'll notice that if you look at the overhead, you can see that there's a main connection point and then two hose outlets. What I want to do is I want to install this with those two hose outlets on the left side if you're facing the gantry. So let me undo this a little more. This is pretty snug. I'm going to take a flat head and just kind of open that gap up just a little bit. And I am holding the spindle tight because I certainly don't want that to just come crashing down. Now, you can bring that down to just about anywhere you need. Feel free to adjust this up and down uh, for here. I'm going to allow, you know, about two fingers widths. Obviously, the further down you go, the less clearance you're going to get with your gantry when it raises back up. But I also don't want this, you know, sticking way up here with minimal uh, support. So I'm going to mount it in about right there with just a little bit of gap down at the bottom. And you do want to make sure this is tight. And again, this is a great time to trim this 
And if you're not sure what that means is making sure that it is perfectly uh, perpendicular to the table and this, or to the gantry in this way, as well as this way. So it might require shims or adjustment of the system. And all that would be done with the tramming jig that has uh, um, an indicator on it, whether it be digital or dial, that's what you'd wanna use to tram that up. So the spindle is now mounted. So at this point we can run hoses and everything else. So let's see what's next on the old owner's manual here. All right, so it starts talking about running the hoses over and there are two hoses, one that has a flow valve, which gives you a visual aid to be able to tell something's going and the other is just a standard. So what they're recommending is if you've got the motor or the spindle in this orientation is to put the flow valve on the front. So let's take this off and let's feed this hose. Make sure we don't forget the nut. We're going to feed this hose right over top of that valve. Now, if you find that, that it's a little snug, it will fit on there. Um, you can take this and warm it up with a torch or some kind of heat, heat gun would be better. But you want to push it all the way down until it seats properly on this little valve right there. And it is seated all the way properly down to this threaded portion. Now I want to come down and just sort of snug this nut down on top of that. And we're going to repeat that process over here with the other hose. Sometimes you got to wiggle that a little bit to get it to seat down over top of that. And it doesn't help the fact that I completely forgot to put the nut on. So let's back off and do that again. Slide that nut on. And get that seated. Slide the nut down. And I'll come back later and get a wrench and tighten those down once I get to that place. All right, so that's on. The flow valve is in place. And we should be good to go there. Now it'll be time to start filling this with that um, propylene glycol. So let me spin this back around so you can see what I'm doing there. All right, so this is your fill valve. If this is already too snug, feel free to take that off uh, with, a, with a, a flathead. But in this case, I don't think I need it. Uh, they recommend a funnel. I don't have one with me. So we'll see if I can't do this the old school way. And I'm just going to put this into an empty container and try to be cautious with how much I put in. Let's see here what they say. Fill the reservoir with water or propylol. Let's see if we can't get this in. And I will go back and snug those connections up before I turn this on. And I am leaking. Take two on that. Okay, so what we identified was from the leak was this line coming off of the reservoir into this initial uh, fitting here. Uh, it wasn't quite seated in there. So all I did was I loosened the four screws that hold this piece on and made sure that was seated properly. I reattached it to the frame, and if need be, if for some reason this is a pretty pretty tight little bend right here, if need be, you could put some washers on the back side of this if yours would continue to leak. This one seemed to fix the problem. It just needed to be seated properly. I got it all taken care of. I will keep an eye on this, and if it does happen, I will put some kind of washers behind this plate to space this plate out just a little bit. But for now, everything's clean and dry. I've got this reservoir full. We're going to plug this in so that we can start priming this pump to see how that's going to work. So give me just one second here.
And I'm glad I did put this screw back on, but notice the fluid level. It went down. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug that. We don't want that pump to run. Fill that up again. And you likely might not have to do this, but once or twice. Uh, but let's see what this result does this time. All right, that looks good. And hard to see from the camera, but this is moving. And that's a, that's a flow meter, so that lets you know at least there is fluid movement. Uh, I think that's a good sign that everything's running smooth, so we're gonna, gonna let that go. So I'm gonna tighten this back down. Not gonna torque it, I do want it to be snug. So before we do anything else, well, I do see an error that I did, so let me fix that real quick. I did not allow enough excess coming back to me to give proper exit for the hose. There we go. So now it's not upside down if you are standing on your head when you read it. Keep that in mind. That bottom screw is a little snug to get back into, but it you do want to make sure to get them all tightened. This is a sticker. So my guess is whoever put the sticker on just put the sticker on wrong. But there, that's it. That's mounted back on there. I do want to make sure that one last screw was snug. I just don't feel like I got a good bite on that last one. Very difficult to get in there. There we go. All right. So now I can go back to my track and make sure that this is in there properly. I'm going to pull a little more back. I'm going to go ahead and close that line and we'll start right there. That's good. Good enough. So now I think the rest of this should flow okay. Now that looks good. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to flip this back around and we're going to start the wiring part for the spindle. What has to happen here, this is the VFD. This is what converts this 220 volt spindle into 110 volts. So what this does is this has all got a fish from wherever this is gonna mount. And I recommend mounting this probably somewhere near your control box. And in our case, it's gonna be right underneath the table. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and, and sit this where it's gonna go. And then I can work on getting that fished up and around to where that needs to go. And it does come with quite a long cable. One of these is a power cable, obviously, that's going to go to your power strip that is used with your control box. The other is a piece that's going to mount into the front of your control controller itself, not the pendant, but the control box. This mounts on the front of the control box. And then this is the part that fishes up through everything and gets connected right okay, in. So here. we've got to fish this cable up through all of this and over. And figuring out the best way to do that, well, your guess is as good as mine. So what we'll do is we'll just take a minute and evaluate what we've got because the way they've done this is it all fishes through this, not quite long enough to do so. So if we were to kind of see where this is gonna end up, which will be right there, and this gets fished along this wire track like so, this may have to just dangle off the side, which should not be a problem. So that's probably what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it where we can just let this hang off the side. It's not gonna move side to side. It'll just flow um, forward and backward as the you're going along your X axis or your Y axis. So let's do that. We'll go ahead and get this installed here and I'll start back tracing it to here and we'll see what's left over. 
there are little indention marks that need to line up. And I'm going to go to the other side so I can see those better and actually pull the spindle this way. Get that seated all the way in and get that knurled nut tightened all the way down. Just like that. And it looks like that's a 9 16 all right so let's see what's next on the old agenda here all right now it's time to finish that wire track now before i bury this in this tr this wire track i do want to make sure the spindle does in fact work so what we're going to do is we're going to go come down here and i have a power strip i'm going to connect all of this to the power strip pump is working that is working and that is working. So now all three of those should turn on at the same time when you go to turn on your machine. And on the front of the controller is a pinned place where this is going to get fastened into. It's right by where the handheld pendant gets, gets attached. So now let's turn this all back on. Give it a moment. The pump came on, I heard the VFD is now on, and now the handheld pendant is on. Not sure if it shows up, but you can certainly see the flow meter is working or the flow control is working. That means there is actually fluid coming through there. All right, so let me get a file, throw it on a thumb drive, and uh, we'll just see what this thing will do. Just make sure this spindle is running smoothly. Okay, so I've got the I've got a thumb drive and a file ready to go. I want to test this all before we go. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to load this thumb drive into the controller. Notice now that the USB light has lit up on the on the pendant. So we're going to select that USB. We're going to go ahead and select the file that I've got written. I've already set my X, Y, and Z on the spindle high enough where it's not going to create any problems. This gives you a good rundown of what's happening on the, what's going to happen with the machine as, as far as the G code goes. And if you forget how you're supposed to lay out your project, this is a good reminder of where everything's supposed to be. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click next. And everything's lined up, ready to go. I can adjust my speed should I need to, but in this case, I'm going to click start. Now you'll notice the spindle is very quiet. You'll actually hear the machine moving more than you will the spindle. We've got good flow on the meter, so we know fluid is coming through. I'm not seeing any leaks anywhere on the table, which is always a good sign. So there we go. We have just installed the water-cooled spindle, the three-horsepower upgraded water-cooled spindle from Shark for, on the Shark Next Wave CNC. This is a fantastic upgrade. I'm personally looking forward to putting it to work. So. I guess I'll have to see and see you guys later because I got stuff to do. Y'all have a great day. Bye now. We hope you enjoyed that presentation of the three horsepower spindle featuring Chris Smith. If you'd like to check out more of our videos, please select one of the playlists on the right or check us out at woodworkingshop.com.